Gunshots stunk cut. Yeah, you know that's us. Where we only speak the real and the real rock with us. Where we motivate the people and the politic on success. Oh no, we ain't DJ Kelly, but they swear we the best. Gunshots stunk cut. What's happening? It's Contrast Uncut. It's season four, episode 36. I want to make sure I give a big shout out to Uncle Snoop's Army and Bobby D Presents. I appreciate you, brothers. It's your host, Zylo, aka DJ Juan Dollars, like I won some money. Today, we have a really dope, incredibly hilarious special guest. And he's from, you know, the shy town where they keep it real with a real way. You understand me? You got to move a certain way in that motherfucker. Otherwise, you ain't going to make it out. And I'm talking about he's from the south side of Chicago, Illinois, to be exact. He's a multifaceted rising star with accomplishments in the fields of stand-up comedy as a writer, an actor, musician, and producer on both sides, from film to TV to music. This brother is just, you know, he missed to do it all, missed to make it happen when it comes to behind the scenes to in front of the scenes. As you know, the first time I saw this brother that made me a fan was on YouTube. He had me crying, laughing, thinking all in the same instance, and it just, you know, it fucked up my head. But that's the reality to comedy skits that this brother is able to produce and, and make sure it rubs your heart the right way. But also at the same time, it makes you laugh and cry because it's, it's just dope. It's organic and it's genuine. It's not forced on you. And, you know, like many others, we all started to notice him on Kevin Hart's Guide to Black History, to BET's Games People Play, to Tyler Perry's Brown BT Plus, to his live hour long stand up on Amazon, Chicago, I'm home. And I really respect this brother for taking content back home and showcasing where he's from, because that is something everyone has to embrace is where they're from, because that really establishes where you're going and how to get back and show people how to inspire. This brother is putting in his 10,000 hours in the right way with content that sticks and makes you think. And if you don't know who I got on the show by now, it's all good. We got our episode to chop it up with the brilliant mind behind Only Believe Entertainment, Barry Brewer Jr., everybody. What's up, man? That was an amazing intro, by the way, bro. <laughs> oh, true. Salute, bro. Shit. That's just, you know, if I could get back as a fan, but also from a media journalistic standpoint, my, you know, the flowers to you and just right. a, a, a fraction of a, just of what you've done, like, you know, just two minutes of what, 30,000 hours you done put in. This yes, ain't sir. shit. <laughs> Hold on one second, bro. I'm so sorry. Hey, Kamara. Yeah, I have vitamins. If not, I, yeah, I have his vitamins. If not, I'll go get him some new ones. If you don't have none, could you please go get some? Yeah, I already have some, but I'll get him some more. But I just haven't been upstairs because I've been out of town, but I definitely got it. Okay. We'll make sure you're good. Okay. All right. Okay. But being a father never stops. <laughs> My child's mom, make sure you have vitamins for him. You know what? I want to make sure I give you your flowers just from that, that you are a dedicated father. That's something that people don't understand is that kids don't spell love with M-O-N-E-Y. They spell it T-I-M-E. And okay. even if it's a meaningful minute, a meaningful hour, you know, you definitely make sure that, that you know, you give that moment, you provide. And I got to give you your flowers for that as well, brother. And thank you, man. I don't want to cry, bro. It means so much to hear that right now, man. Cause like, bro, like the, the you know, like just really trying to be a great father and combating society and, you know, make a relationship not working out and just you all seeing each other differently. And you just want to be the best you can and try to provide the better life for your son or your daughter, whoever that may be, man. And it can be really challenging. I, I, and it's sad to say this, man, but I understand why some men give up. Like, I, like, you know, you don't understand that when you ain't no father and you ain't been through the court system. But when you go through it, you could see why, like, you can lose, like, faith and, and just the energy you have to put in. And you like, bro, I'm not going to kill myself over this and, and and it's so hard it can be so emotionally draining bro so i don't i'm saying that to say thank you like those words are not 
like, oh man, pre no, it really means something to me, especially right now, bro. Like I said, it just means so much, man. Because honestly, I've I've, fought, I've my son live in Chicago, bro, and I flew from LA to Chicago for eight nine years straight every month to have him a week, and I've consistently did it for nine years, bro. And I ain't never said this to nobody. Nine years, bro, I've been doing this back and forth every month during the school year. Two planes I have to take to get to Chicago through Delta and two planes back. And, and I remember some, some weeks, bro, I'd be so drained and then go back and try to make it and chase my dreams. And so uh, it, it just been a challenge, bro. And so I tell you that, like, I, like you were saying earlier, you was like, you didn't have no dad and you want to be that and more for your children. You know what I'm saying? So when you say that, you don't understand you asking to go through hell because it ain't, ain't nobody like, you know, like it's you fighting the system, you fighting her sometimes, you fighting so many elements. And then your child looking at you like, hey, what's up? Like, and then you got to sit there and put on a, a hey, what you want to do after you done been through hell to get them? You know what I'm saying? You're like, I don't want that. You're like, <laughs> it's like, boy, if you know what I had to go through just to sit here in front of you today, and they don't know, you know what I mean? So you got to just put that aside and now become dad, loving dad, because you didn't been through hell just to sit in front of them and have them in your presence. So, bro, I'm, I, you know, it's just a, a lot, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it so much, man. And, and, and I appreciate it. And a shout out to all the fathers that go unnoticed and that's putting the work in to be a great parent because there's no award for that. You know, sometimes the child's mother will never come say, hey, man, thank you. You do a great job for our child. Like, you'll never hear that in your life. There's so many men that, you know, went through so much to be a parent. And we give homage and praise to all the mothers that's doing their thing. But it's mama, Mother's Day be feel crowded, da-da-da-da. Father's Day, you don't even know it's Father's Day. You be like, oh, it's Father's Day? It's like, just a hot summer these, day. Oh, the worst yeah, gifts. You get the just terrible gifts. <laughs> bro, bro, we don't get no commercials or nothing, bro. You ever go to the restaurant to be filled on Mother's Day? You can't get no seat, bro. You can sit wherever you want on Father's Day. It ain't being this a regular day, bro. But it's fathers out there really putting in the work, really doing and being the backbone of their community and their and their family and putting in the work, man. And I just I appreciate that. And shout out to all of those fathers, man. We need you. You know, please keep doing what you're doing. Anybody that's watching this, whatever you're going through, let me just encourage somebody because I need it. Don't think that what you do, sometimes you don't get the homage or the praise. Don't think that God don't see it. What You won't reap what you sow. Like, even though nobody's seeing, nobody's saying that your life is going to be blessed because of the things you do in private. And you ain't, you know what I'm saying? The mom ain't never, nobody ever will come maybe and say nothing, but your life will be blessed because of those things, man. So keep doing what you're doing. All those fathers out there, man. That's just all I got to say. Thank you for that, bro. Hey, no, from one dedicated father to the next, brother, I got to tell you something that, you know, nobody knows. I do shows where I travel to people. I pull up on people. I go six, seven hours away and drive all the way back. It don't matter if I get home two, three, four o'clock in the morning. Just wow. so my kids wake up, my wife wakes up, go to school. She's a preschool teacher. They see me in the bed. And I try to get up every morning. I've been on it more lately than other times just because my wife been on me to do it more. Just as your wife, as your life gets busier, you got to make sure you keep your household in order. And that's, that's something good. I'm battling because, I, you know, when you get a little bit of this life and things start to open up, you want to continue. I don't want to use the word chase because I feel like I attracted the wealth and the wealth is receiving me back. And so I'm, I'm going on that journey. And sometimes it's hard to explain that, hey, it's going to take this time. But no matter what, I make the decision to come back no matter where the fuck I'm at. Like only time I spent away is when we went to like, we flew somewhere and that's just, and it was FaceTime every night till you went to bed. Like you feel like that high school love again. Cause you want to, all right, till they go to sleep till I go to sleep and yeah. eat three hours in advance, but shit, I hope they get tired. Shit. This is a long day. The next day. <laughs> Bro, I understand. I listen. And that's, I just wish, and maybe I, maybe I'm meant to do it. Maybe there needs to be an award. Maybe there needs to be some recognition for that because it's so many fathers like you and others that just really putting in the work 
and not that you need the recognition, but it's just so encouraging. It's so, it feels so good to be appreciated. And people say all the time, nobody does things for appreciation, but man, does it feel good to be appreciated. Man, does it give you a little oomph to keep going. Man, does it make you feel good to say, I'm gonna keep doing it, you know what I mean? And that is important. Sometimes you need to be a little fuel in the tank so you can keep moving and going after whatever you're chasing, you know what I mean? Or, or up, you know, trying to just obtain more of, so bro. I just shout out some praises to you, bro, for that. Uh, thank you, brother. It's feeling the spirit for the both of us, brother, because I ain't going to lie. Like, sometimes I, as I learned, I didn't know you were a father, bro, to be honest. And once you said that in the off, I was like, oh, some's tell me I got to talk about this from the jump. Because mm -hmm. one, that, you know, I'm going through my own little personal things on my own. And like, it's just I'm trying to battle, battle. I, I gave up a big old interview yesterday because I made it more important that I showed my wife I was going to clean and do stuff around the house because that's what is important to her. And if she's upset, the whole household's upset. You can't keep your wife happy. Your kids ain't going to be right because, you know, it's going to fall apart because they're looking at their parents argue or, you know, feel that energy. Yes, that's so true, bro. That's so true. And, and that's wisdom. I and mean, we learn it, man. We learn it as we go, man. I'm just grateful for you learning it where you got it at. Because you're right, man. Be right, peace is so important in that in that in that space. So, oh yeah, I agree. time's the most finite thing we have on this earth, brother. So I want to make sure I tell you from the jump how much I appreciate your time for fucking with me, fucking with the viewers, and you know being transparent, bro, and just you know just rocking with the energy. Man, man, it's my honor, bro. I agree. I always say time is your most precious asset. Like you, that's the only thing you can't get back. You can get back money. You can get another lover, <laughs> you know, time you can't get back, man. So I appreciate you having me, man. It's an honor to be here, man. So I appreciate it. Thank you, bro. Speaking of time, Barry, what's the normal 24 hours for you? Man, for me, uh, I wake up. Uh, I've been trying to hoop on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. So when I wake up, I pray. Like I've made it a thing to pray before I grab my phone. You know, that's kind of like our first thing. So to be consistent with praying, I try to pray right before I grab my phone when I wake up. I usually grab my phone, look at what time it is, see how much more sleep I can get. Uh, <laughs> you know, you look at the phone, you be like, eh, got a few more minutes. Uh, right, try to get a few more in. You know, probably look at Instagram, just, just out of, just out of, um, out of habit. See if somebody shot me a DM, look at my text messages. Uh, look at my day, see what I got to do on a Monday. I'll get up like today. I got up, uh, washed up, brushed my teeth, put on my hooping clothes, went to go work out. Um, I do this little run, um, get my workout in, come back home, see what I got up for today. I'm a creative, right? So on like Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm usually planning to shoot sketches. So I wake up, wash up what I'm shooting today, shoot my sketches. Um, if I got to do some errands right now, I just went from shooting something that I got to edit. So putting that on schedule. So my days are very different every day, but for the most part, man, it's a creative day. Either I'm working on some writing something, editing something, making some calls, trying to build my, you know what I mean? Connecting with other creators, seeing who I'm collaborate with. Um, right now I got two shows. I just produce independently from only believe entertainment that I'm trying to shop to BET Plus and different networks like that. I'm working with Black Oak TV, which is a new streaming platform that launches next year. Show ID called Jack and Jill, a premiere on there. Um, uh, so that I directed and wrote and starred in. Yeah, bro, so it's just like building. Right now I'm writing a, uh, two movies, features, two feature films. And you know, so my day is like that. And then if my son is here, you know, I'm usually at one of his workouts. He's, you know, he play ball. So in the evening time, we, we, we trucking it to his, I got, I got him a personal trainer trying to get him right. So when we got two years for seventh grade, you gotta be crazy. I'm like, come on, two years. I'm trying to get him nice with it. Mm -hmm. um, so giving my attention to him, um, my other kids are in college. So I talk to them occasionally, they, they grown. So they kind of moving like that. You know, spending time with the wife, um, giving her my time at the evening time, we'll sit and watch a movie, get some food. I love eating and watching TV at the same time. <laughs> and that's how I end my night, you know what I'm saying? Usually with her, what we watching, what we eating, 
having the food there, watching the movie, falling asleep, doing it all over again the next day. You know, the reason why I've decided to start asking everybody that, because, you know, one thing, people don't understand what it takes to be successful. They just think that it's just this word in the dictionary that means you made it somewhere, but not realizing that it's 10,000 hours, 20,000. It's, it's so much time put into it. And when you're doing something you love that's passion and purpose, it doesn't even feel like you're doing that many hours into it. It's, I got to do this. I got to do that. But as you were listing all the things you do, you didn't even talk about music and it was just like, wow, like literally, if you want to understand what it takes just to see a name on a credit and go from this platform to that platform, this is what it takes. And is it supposed to be, you know, something to scare you or be fearful? No, success is not supposed to make you afraid, but people become afraid of success. And, you know, some people have to understand that all of those things tie in like, you know, like time to tie your shoes and double knot it. It's step after step after step. It's just what part of the step are you going to do to make it where it benefits you or benefits what you're trying to do? And that's something, you know, that not enough people understand that it takes so much to do something. It's not just, hey, I thought of this idea. We filmed it and someone did the uh, post for me and someone else did this for me. Bro, you doing everything. You said you're editing the videos. That's just. Wow. Yeah, bro. It's it's work, man. It's It's grinding, man. But. It's what it is. I tell people all the time, greatness is is a is a very important part of your work ethic. Your work ethic is what I told I was just telling a young lady earlier, I was like, you think that sometimes people being great, people are like, well, they're so talented. They know how to do this, they know how to do that. I'm like, it's a lot of people that know how to do it. It's that work ethic that will separate. To be able to work close with Tyler Perry, bro, and see his work ethic, he got to be where he is because of work ethic. Right. It's not about and when you even look at the greats in sports, like the Michael Jordans and so forth, I was listening to uh, Alex Caruso, who played for the Lakers, talk about LeBron. He was like, he was like, you hear about Michael Jordan being the first one in the gym or Kobe being the first one in the gym. He's like, LeBron, the first one in the gym. Greatness is not about your abilities is the thing that helps you, but your work ethic and your abilities together is what gets you to greatness in anything that you do. And I think that people – People don't understand that. And I'm glad that I learned that because I feel, my wife, I'd be feeling like I'm not doing enough. She'd be like, sit down. I'm like, like when I'm just sitting down, like these past two days, I kind of been, because I was working, shooting 12 hours for, for a week and a half, 12 hour days. It's draining. And after the 12 hours over, I still had like three hours of work to do because I'm doing everything with the production. So anyway, I took the days, but when I tell you I'm sitting there and I'm like, I feel like I'm being unproductive because time is passing by and I ain't did nothing. My wife's like, well, you got to rest. Like your body needs to rest so that you can go be great, you know? So right. she was telling me how important it is for that rest, for the body to be able to go and now put that work back in again, you know? So um, I, I had got sick during the production. I was like feeling bad. I was like, oh man. It's the worst feeling when you got to go work and be, you're responsible for every. I'm sorry. This came out. Well, hold on, my bad. Hold on, let me plug this back in. But anyway, I was just talking about my work ethic, bro. That's the point I was saying. How I learned that work ethic is everything. Facts. Yeah, Facts. work ethic is everything, bro. So that's me. That's what I'm on. I'm on. I'm on building. Everybody's like, "Oh man, look at what you did." I'm like, "Thank you so much," but I got so much to get to. So I don't ever want to minimize what I've done and what I've accomplished because I'm very grateful. But I also don't ever want to feel like, "Oh yeah, look at where I'm at." Like I don't ever want to feel like that. I don't ever. That's the key to greatness. That yeah. is the key. It's seeing, hey, I don't want to be in a ceiling of complexity. I don't want these walls to feel like they're crushing on me when I can still create different walls and doors to open up in different areas because of relationships that I built during my first level of ceiling of complexity that I evolved and leveled up from. Wow, that's deep. That You just said something deep right there. That's real. That's real, bro. That's real. And that's exactly how I feel right now. You know, everybody's like, oh, wow. And, and, and I understand. I understand to the to the average person, it's like, 
yeah, to be on TV is something I've always aspired to do, right? So when you get on TV, you're looking like, what? I'm looking at Tyler Perry Studios like, oh yeah, I got to get this. This is what I got to do. Only Believe in Entertainment needs to look like this. And I'm sure he looking like, okay, I got this. He looking somewhere else. <laughs> He's looking somewhere else even beyond that. You know what I'm saying? Because at every stair, you're like, how do I get to the next one? Right. And how do I, like, I ain't, like I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna quit till I'm dead. I told myself I want to set the bar so high, so my son like, let's get it. Then he set the bar high, right? Mm -hmm. His son and his daughter, and they like to where generations from now we really got generational wealth. We really, as a community, making a real difference. Yes. Because it means nothing to talk about all the problems that exist in the world and not see what can be your contribution to make the world a better place. Yes. Like, like. I, I love making people laugh. I love entertaining people. I love creating music. I love doing all of this. I really do. And I understand that there's a place for that. But more importantly, I want to be in a position where I can help people's lives for real. After you're done laughing, after you're done being entertained, you got to go back to that real world. You know what I'm saying? You got to go back to whatever life you really got going on. And I want to hopefully be able to do something outside of making you laugh to make life better. And you can only do that with real wealth. You know, something that you do, and I don't even know if you do it, but you could be an inspirational, motivational speaker, make like 15, 20,000 a time that you speak and go to all these companies and businesses, make them laugh because the stuff that you're saying is so real, it sticks to you. But at the same time, you give them something and be like, oh, I'm gonna go back into the workplace and just love on everybody. Let's laugh together and get this stuff done. And you know, it's so funny that you chose to take it to a such broader platform that one pays more. Don't get me wrong, that, that 19, 20,000 every time you go speak is beautiful. But I got a friend that does it and you know, I got some little privy information. I, I didn't get to, get to do it, but this platform got discovered and, and I jumped on it and you know, here we are. But needless to say, you know, I'm happy that, that you stuck to the platform to give to all and not just the people that are in companies that need to embrace their work, their work's lifestyle and work, you know, atmosphere. Definitely, definitely, bro. But yeah, bro, that's, that's, that's it, man. That's what I, my 24 days, my 24 hours be looking like. It's constant moving. How do I get to the next level? That's, that's every day. I got a quote, bro. We've already talked about this brother just a little bit, but you know, all the quotes this brother has, it could stack up enough words where it's a crossword puzzle that probably builds schools upon schools. And wow. this is one of the quotes that stuck out to me that I felt like would relate to you just because you're based of your history. But you can let me know if I'm wrong. The idea is I want you to talk about the quote. Okay, deal. I've never chased money. It's always been about what I can do to motivate and inspire people. Tyler Perry. Uh, that post fits me perfectly. Uh, how very is that? I'm looking at what life is about. I'll talk about the quote about inspiring, motivating people. Because when your time is said and done, we know that death is inevitable, right? We all going to leave here some way, somehow. So I'm here for a reason. I always say every creation has always been created anything around you. I mean, you can look from your clothes to your hair, to your cabinets, to the pictures on the wall, to everything, every creation was meaningful. It's for a reason. You're a creation, so that means you're for a meaning. You we were created for, for a reason. So I, I, I try to really dig to see what is life all about, for real. Like really what it's about to get to the quote that you just said. Money doesn't really hold true value. Man, Somebody said, hey, this $10 is this. This phone is worth this. And somebody said, this straw is less. So we put the value on money. But inspiring people to really do something and find their destiny and find their purpose is something that lives on beyond you. You get what I'm saying? When you can really inspire somebody, you can have money, but you can't take money with you. You know what I'm saying? Your money don't even live on, right? Cause like it don't live on, like it's gone. Like, however, it doesn't, it's nothing can benefit. Hopefully somebody manage it right, but that's not something that you can really bank on that can be of value. But inspiring somebody and motivating somebody will only make them do the exact same to, to somebody else. So it can continue to, to evolve and to be, to live beyond your time, period. Martin Luther King, 
He's been dead for a long time, but look how he inspired Barack Obama. Look of the people that he inspired so far away that never even met him, never knew him, right? So I just think that quote is not just a quote, but it's a lifestyle. And it's something that we all as men and women should, uh, we should live, live for. We should live to inspire and encourage somebody along our way. Because at the end of the day, I think that your funeral will be a result of the, of the, of the work you put in on earth. Those people that come sitting, stand over your body, how did your life impact them? How is their life better because you lived? You feel what I'm saying? Like, I want Tyler Perry, I said this, I wrote this, Tyler Perry at the end of the shoot, they gave us this thing to sign. And I said, thank you for believing in your dream so that mine could come true. That's inspiring and encouraging because he chased and believed in what he saw for himself to now he can open up doors for my dream to now come true of what I wanted for myself to be able to do on his platform and with his resources and with what he's obtained. So now my dream came true to be a lead in a, in a show, right? So, so exactly, right? Like that continues to do. So now I create things, right? When I was doing my production last week, I ain't had no big production, but it was a nice size production. And I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I'm paying all these people. And all these people getting to do the thing they love, the camera guy, the, <laughs> everybody was just moving and just enjoying. And I thought about it, I was like, oh man, they was calling me like Tyler Perry Jr. <laughs> and, and it was a compliment, it was a compliment, I took it. But I'm just saying, look at how we all can do that in some shape or form, you get what I'm saying? And I just think at the end of the day, that's what life should be about. I know we think life is about money and fame, but those things are only tools to build something with. It means nothing to be walking around like, yeah, I got hammer and nails. What are you doing with it? That's what. That's how people sound when they say they got money. But you know what? It breaks down to the legacy. And even if it's hammer and nails, it's what they build with that hammer and nails. It's with the money and the power and the fame. It's what they build with that and how they leave it on this earth. And that legacy part of that is the most important thing. Everything I read about Tyler Perry is, is legacy. It's, it's all about not promoting his legacy, but his path to his legacy. And that right there is the most genuine, you know, respectful thing you can ask for because you got consultants talking about the path and they charge you versus this brother will tell you something so deep in a quote that you may have never heard, but read it. And it hits you in the face. Like, man, the diamonds is in my eyes. Man, for real. And, and, and they ain't trying to charge for it. Bro. He told us, bro, Tyler Perry discovered, I got an opportunity to audition for Tyler Perry show me, big jaw, and Minx, we all got an opportunity to audition because he saw our sketch. I don't know nobody in Mr. Perry's position or sit in his seat that goes and looks for the diamonds in the rough. It's a billionaire looking in the dirt. Who can I help? Who can I find? Oh, y'all like what you got. You've been working. Let me give you an opportunity. Looking through the dirt, pulling out diamonds. Oh, they like, huh. Dust you off, give you some. Like, like people can say what they want to say and and that's fine everybody has a right to their opinion but results don't lie you know what i mean look at how many you can say what you want but the results don't lie he's given so many people idris elba careers tyler perry is responsible for his career taraji Pen, uh what's her name taraji henson or penson no it's henson i think i don't know taraji her career is, he's responsible for giving her, you get what I'm saying? All these people, he's also giving jobs back to people that wasn't working. Felicia Rashad, who was on the Cosby show, she wasn't even working. Cicely Tyson, who worked with Sidney Poitier. Hollywood was done with them. We done with you. Mr. Perry, his dream, he was, when they was on the Cosby show, he was poor, living out his car. When the, they thrive and they winning. He don't got nothing. Now his life is in a position to give them work. Bro, you, what you just said was to, to highlight the path to your destiny, to give people that understanding is the best thing that you can do for people because it's easy to see the glitz and glamour and see you arrive. 
What was the journey getting there? How did you overcome the obstacles? How did you overcome depression? How did you overcome the moments where you felt like you wasn't going to win when they told you, no, we ain't doing it? When they said, when you was going through hell and high water in every aspect of your personal life, how did you still believe in your dreams and push past that? That's what people need to see. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm scared. I won't make it. I'm scared. I'm not good enough. I'm scared. I don't have the resources. I don't stop. That's just excuses to stay where you are. When do you stop making excuses to say, no, well, you know what? I'm just going to go after it anyway. I don't got nothing to lose. I told everybody, I don't got no plan B because plan A going to work, period. That's why only believe means everything to me because, and, and Eddie Murphy said this a long time ago on the Arsenio Hall show when he was younger. He was like, anytime you have a plan B, you don't have faith in your plan A. That's what he always said. See, so, you know, and, I I got to tell you something, bro. I say this all the time. You make that excuse the reason why you do it. Turn that excuse around. Make it the reason why you do it. And, yeah. you know, something else that I, I feel very just, it, you inspired me to talk about this, is that I quit my job, and then I went to the BET Awards, and I randomly got selected as a, a seat filler, right? And so wow. it's my first time. They didn't take my wife. They only took me. So I'm like, okay, I got to go on my own. And, bro, I'm literally driving from Bakersfield to L.A. It's an hour and a half, maybe two-hour drive, depending on traffic to go all the way to the Staples Center or Convention Center where we had to meet at. And my whole thing is I told my wife, if I see Tyler Perry, I'm going to jump in front of him and tell him I came from this rich white family that changed the whole way things are done. And my father moved to the West Coast, married a Mexican woman. He died when I was four. We grew up poor. I'm from the struggle. I'm from the streets. I've been through it all. And I got a real deep story to tell you. And I can keep, I want to keep on going. I said, if someone tackled me, I'm a wrestler. I was an all area wrestler. I was going to fight all security and still pop back up and sit back down next to him and finish telling my story and fight off whoever I had to. But he going to see I'm resilient. And it was in me to tell him all about myself because he had that path. I've been homeless before sleeping in the park. I slept in the car. I've done, you know, my mother, I, ain't, I love my mom, but she made decisions. She got arrested when she was when she was raising us. And then I lived with my sister and then my sister, she ended up going to jail because my mother told on her. And so it's wow. just like crazy stuff. And you know, it, I made the newspaper from it and through all of that, my dumb ass ended up robbing somebody and going to jail after that. I made the newspaper two weeks later and robbed somebody on my way to college with three jobs. That's wow. just how much, you know, and I was ready to break all that down. And then I didn't get to see Tyler Perry. I went to the after party and then I go to more awards and then, you know, so much happened. So much happened from that. But I was, I got to leave yeah. music alone, leave entertainment alone. And I was like, God said, no, fuck that. <laughs> you need to go here. Let me show you. Let me show you. Just go. Yes. Yes. And, and, and I'm, listen, <laughs> you go get your chance. I promise you, bro. Like, it's just some moments that you can't, you can't write it. You don't know how it's going to come, but you're going to get your chance. And it ain't just going to be an opportunity to tell them. It's going to be an opportunity for you to even evolve in what you're trying to accomplish on your platform. If I don't, if I don't believe in nothing else, man, dreams come true. Thanks. So if I can't tell you nothing else, if I can't prove nothing else to you, if you don't believe nothing else I said today, believe that your dreams can come true if you stay with it and you believe. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart, man, where I'm at today and what I've accomplished, talking about coming from nothing, talking about sleeping under porches from a kid, being on my own, moving to LA by myself at 21, didn't know nobody had never been to LA. The first time I touched down to LA, I was there with my bags to live. Never looked back since, right? 21 years old, mind you, had been on my own since I was 17. You know what I'm saying? Like, Dreams come true, bro, and, 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 I, and I think that your platform is going to only... So, you know, for those that don't know, you know, I haven't upgraded this. You would think almost 200 interviews, and I would upgrade Zoom services, but I haven't. But they pick and choose when they want to cut me out. But I still love you, Zoom, you know. But, I, you know, he was giving me my flowers, giving me a compliment, and then out of nowhere, you guys said, zap. Like, I didn't pay my cell phone bill. You know I paid my cell phone bill. But it zapped my conversation. And, you know, that was probably like a moment where I could have really went somewhere and been happy, got some goosebumps, said, you know, had a bigger smile than I had before. But Zoom said, fuck that. You ain't pay us. And it's okay, Zoom. I mean, eventually we'll work something out. <laughs> I put something on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But... Uh, so yeah, let me let me basically go. I was saying, bro, keep doing what you're doing, your platform and how 
just your story, the people you're bringing on, and just your story in itself to see a person come from where you come from, you know, it's, it's for the underdog, bro. And, and there's so many underdogs out here. And they need to see more underdogs winning like yourself to show, like, it's going to inspire people to get off their butt. Because and, 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 some people can sit in there, have the same life and, and, that you had, very similar instances, and just be like, well, this is why I'm where I'm at. You know, this is, this is why I'm going to go out here and just do whatever. And I'm, I'm gonna not, my life is not going to be nothing because I didn't, I didn't have a fair shot. I didn't have a fair chance. I got the short end of the stick. And we all can say that, you know what I'm saying? But people like you who say, you know what? No, nah, that's not going to be my story. I'm going to go, I'm going to build a platform. I'm going to do it how I do it my way. And I'm going to present it. Like you said, the hood Barbara Walters. When you said that, bro, I was just like, that's genius. It was like the hood Barbara. It's like, there is no hood Barbara Walters. And not only that, that reaches so many from the hood to the to the to the corporate america that people can connect to that you know what i mean and you don't have a platform that connect those two worlds together you very well can be you are that you know what i'm saying and with the keep doing what you're doing you never like i'm telling you look at what <laughs> you look at wendy williams and you look at all these shows and you just never know They're like yeah i was doing zoom i'm years from now you'd be having your own show and I'd be back on there. I'm like, nigga, you got your own show on ABC? <laughs> You're like, yeah, bro. Remember I was on Zoom and they cut us off? <laughs> yeah. I paid, I, mean, I paid a little bit, man. They got me on ABC. <laughs> so keep doing what you're doing, bro. Keep doing it. like, And just keep being transparent about your story because I'm learning in life how important that is. People think that people just arrive, you know? People think that people just, you know, like every time people say, oh man, look at you. I'm like, I tell them quickly. I'm like, I've been doing this 19 years. 19 years I've been at this. All of my things that people see just happened in the last two years of my career. So for 17 years, I've been knocking on the door, nothing. Nothing, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was say I was just playing for my church every Sunday, still trying to pay my bills. People don't know that. Do you know what I mean? People think like, oh, like you know, and, and, and I just be want to be. I try to be as transparent with people. I don't never try to front or be big dogging people because I don't ever want people to have this false sense of. Um, because I was just telling people making it. We was having a a, a debate about success. He's like, yeah, you made it. I was like, bro. I was telling them about entertainers. I was like, there's a handful of black entertainers that really made it. It's probably two. And that's Tyler Perry and Oprah. For me. Because Denzel still need a job. Will Smith still need a job. Whoever else is big. I don't know. But I'm just thinking of black entertainers, like the biggest actors, the Jamie Foxx of the world. The Denzel. Denzel is kind of like the biggest, I think, right? <laughs> you, I don't think you get no bigger. Viola Davis, maybe right. Um, but I was just saying how important it is to us to start thinking ownership and putting ourselves in positions to really be able to win. We argue about different stuff, but nobody's sitting here trying to be the results and I mean, be the 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 resolve of it to to solve the problem. You know what I mean? Man, it's not enough dish and that. You know what I mean? Man, ain't nobody care about us in the hood. Well, won't you start something that care about people in the hood? Won't you build a platform to, to connect the hood to the world and give them this, this encouragement and, hey, man, you can be better than, like, won't you do it? You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody did nothing for me, man. Ain't nobody do it. You do something for you. You do something for somebody. Like, like it's okay. Nobody do nothing for me either. But that's no excuse for me to sit here and do nothing. My pastor told me this. He told me something real dope. He's like, you ever get real mad about something? He'd be like, why nobody helping these people? And nobody else, they walking past, like it ain't important to them. He's like, have you ever thought maybe it's your, maybe that's your thing to do? Maybe that's your responsibility? That's why nobody else cares because it's for you to do? I was like, anytime you really mad about something, you don't see anybody else kind of like sharing that plight with you. Maybe it's because it's for you to touch. 
and to tend to and to think and, and fix and help become better. Because you're the one that recognized the problem. You're trying to fill the void. That's how you solve the problem. No one else is seeing it's wrong. You the only one. That's that moment. It was like, I'm the only one looking in the mirror. Yeah. Bro, that was deep. so deep. I think you just hit me in the face with a 20 karat diamond, and I think I'm scarred in the right way. Bro, he told me that, bro. I was like, ah. Oh. It's, and it stopped making me get frustrated with other people. You know what I'm saying? Because you know how we walk around like, yeah, these niggas don't get that. Excuse me for saying that. I don't know if I can say that on here. Right. But you it's know what I'm saying? Good. It's uncut. Oh, cool. Yeah, cool. It's how to make it contrast. You understand me? Right. I've been doing a lot of television interviews. But I can't be like, hey, yeah, this nigga. Woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> but we on the hood, Barbara Walton. So I can be real transparent with you. But um, just, you know, seeing the problems that we face in our communities, like, I don't want to get into no deeper issues, but I was telling my wife when we were doing a lot of the protesting and things with Black Lives Matter, mm -hmm. me and my wife had a real honest conversation. She wanted to go to a protest. And this is after protesting has been like, it was like a lot of protesting. And I was just like, why, babe? I was like, why? Like, you want a photo op to just say you wouldn't protest? Or can you focus on something that can really help live, Black Lives Matter? Like you work in education. Like what can you do that can really be effective to make Black Lives Matter for real? Because you going out there holding up a poster is cool, but can you do more? Because how effective is that really? We've been protesting for years. You know what I'm saying? Like we've been doing this for years. What can I do to really be effective what can I really contribute to really make a difference? You know what I'm saying? In whatever problem, that's just that scenario. But, but no, I, let, me, let me just say something, bro, because I went through this same whole thing. I, my wife is black. Uh, my ch I'm raising a black son, a black daughter, and wow. that's something I'm proud to do. And, you know, coming from the culture, my sister was half black and she raised me. So it's like, that's why this culture is really driven in me and then my family's from the South. But that's here nor there. Some that, that I went through this, I was like, man, I told my wife, I don't feel like I need to go out there and protest because I have a segment on here that raises awareness on when's the last time you're pulled over and what to do in the situation of getting pulled over so that other people know how to get out the situation safely. And so I felt like that was enough. That was enough through the first air. And then the second wave, when Breonna Taylor, you know, they, they said that they'd rather arrest the cop for shooting the wall than putting bullets in an innocent woman and that hurt me so i was like you know what fuck all of this i went to la to get a tattoo the tattoo thing didn't work out the right way and the protest went right past us and god said y'all need to go in this protest and feel this energy and so now we're in the protest and it's like we've been teeter-totter teeter-tottering with this whole idea because we feel like man this is our time we're in the 60s we'd be out there getting it because her and i we're not supposed to be okay we battle shit in public every day and you know, from that, we're like, let's do it, let's do it. But we never did. And then God said, no, you're not, you're here for this. And it was like my birthday weekend on top of that. And it was like, I got to have this whole, like, outer yeah. body experience with everything of like everything I've been trying to envision and see and feel. And then it just, it was so out of this world that I, it's like, okay, I'm happy I did protest. You know, the shit did get bad the further they went but God gives you a sense of wisdom when to stop. And then sometimes your feet hit you like you didn't wear the right walking shoes. You weren't prepared to do this. What the fuck was you thinking? And then we have to walk back to the car. And you know, my wife, she old school. We ain't riding no Uber. We ain't taking no scooters. We ain't doing none of that. We walking back and I'm just like, oh my Lord. All That's right. hilarious. But yeah, and, and, but for each and every person, you gotta really think about what am I really doing this for? And how am I really being effective in anything you're trying to accomplish? You know what I'm saying? I think sometimes we just move. We just like, I'm going to do this. Like, have you sat there and really pondered how is this going to help? And that's all I was talking about was just being effective. And I think as a community and as people moving forward, whether you're chasing your dreams, you're trying to accomplish something in corporate America, you know, you want to have a music career, or whatever you want to do, whatever you want to have your own business, burger stand, whatever, like whatever you're trying to accomplish, really sitting there saying, okay, what is the steps that I need to take to make this better? If there's a problem, what can I do individually instead of pointing the finger about who ain't doing whatever, how can I make it better? You know, we sitting here crying about the president election. 
truth be told, bro, we didn't see presidents come and go, crazy ones, not so crazy, decent ones, not so decent. What am I doing to build my family's lives? How am I making their lives better, right? I'm gonna go vote, I'm gonna do my part. I ain't gonna, I, you go do your part. You know, at, at all that, hey, I'm gonna do my part. I don't know how it works, but I'm gonna do my part. But what am I doing in my personal life to help my, my, my family's lives, my life be better and get to the things that I wanna accomplish? I just think that's life. I think that's something that, so yeah. Anyway, we was talking about the problems, seeing the problems in the world and, and you know, executing them. You know, one thing we all learned from Nipsey Hussle is that, you know, rest in heaven, Nip, but, you know, mm -hmm. ownership, 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 mm -hmm. ownership of voting, ownership of, in, of your dreams, ownership of what you want to see for yourself, ownership of what is reality for you right now, what you want to do, that manifestation you see where that ground in your feet don't match, figure out what you have to do to make that happen and then start doing it. That's real. That ownership is it puts you in a position to really make a difference, period. Because at the end of the day, no matter what you feel and what's wrong, when you're not in a position of power, there's nothing you can do, you're helpless. And that's just the reality. You brought it up, bro. Tyler Perry, Oprah versus everybody else. What, what's the things that stand out? It's ownership. That's the only thing that stands out. <laughs> that's it. And, and they put themselves in that position. And so as an actor, as a creator, like, that's what I want to get to, you know, whether it be the studios, owning the network, like being able to really, um, being able to set up generations to come to really have a say so. I was watching Fox News given this whole election and uh, when Donald Trump said, you know, it's rigged or what have you, and then they just start running with it and no, no disrespect to any Whoever you support, excuse me, whoever you support. But I was looking at how powerful media is and how they can take a narrative and just buy into it because whether it be false or true, I don't think that there was real evidence to really push to support that theory. And But I see how the network took it and just ran. And I was just looking at how powerful media is. And I was just like, wow, there's just there's not a lot of us or just minorities and people that, you know, or even people of integrity, cause it's not even all about color. Cause I tell people that too, you know, good people come in all shapes and sizes and colors. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and, and it's, you know, that's important to understand as well. So anyway, I was just saying how ownership matters. Like I was looking at how the network, I'm like, yeah, you get to push the narrative. And if that's the station we watch, then you kind of buy into that narrative. And it just shows you how important ownership can be. Like you can really guide somebody either in a good way or the bad way. So I do want to just spend just one more second on this. A lot of people don't realize that Jay-Z was doing everything Russell Simmons was doing. So Russell Simmons did Def Jam, Jay-Z started Rockefeller. You know, there was so much where it wasn't competition. It was inspiring. It was aspiring, aspiration acts that allowed for so many gates and walls to be knocked down for the rest of everybody else that's from the gutter and struggling to see that it could be capable of, the dream could be received, the ability to do something you thought you could never see would be done. Traveling the world, you know, being with the finest girls or, you know, doing whatever so happy that you envision. But at the same time, it took people to really take that outside leap of faith and say, I'm gonna walk by faith and not by sight, and I'm gonna take some direction. I'm not gonna believe in the flesh, but I'm gonna believe in the spirit that leads me to the right people to fall in line to work with or build with. Mm -hmm. And that's something that, I, you know, is so important from this whole conversation that we've had. That's something that I hope everyone hits them in the mouth with when it comes to this. Man, I hope so too, bro. And this has been a very, in, just a very, a, a conversation of substance, you know, naturally when you get on, you talk about the things you've done. Oh yeah. I'm grateful for it. But I pray that when people watch things like this, that their life is better, that they're encouraged or inspired to go after their dreams that maybe something they were dealing with or, you know, just conflicted with that they're helped in some way, shape or form. You know what I mean? That, that when they watch your, your, your podcast, I mean, listen to your podcast or watch the video that they, 
like, oh man, I can do it or I can go. Okay. You know what I mean? There's some, something to help them along the way. You know what I mean? So I appreciate you being just a man of substance and having the depth to you, man. It's really an honor to be on here for real, bro. And we definitely got to do this again. Yeah, because I'm going to keep it 100, bro. I didn't even dig into how my normal show goes. Sometimes you just got to go with what you feel and the aura, even though we probably two, 3,000 miles away, the aura was so bright to stick to certain things that I had to, that, you know, it, it created another opportunity for us to build on another you know, platform where, where I do, I have this other show that I feel like that's probably the whole reason why it went down the way it did, because there was so much to be discussed and built, but they don't realize that Rome's, you know, empire wasn't built overnight. No, it wasn't, bro. And if you want to get back, I, I'm a little free. So next week, bro, if you want to jump back on again, bro, we can do another one just to dig in a little more. If you want to get another one in, bro, I'm super down. Wow. I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you so much. Hell yeah, because I, I spent a lot of time on so much of st substance and didn't get to focus on the primary thing I have on the show. And I didn't get to give you as much praises as you deserve and allow oh, people to understand the, the worthiness and the value of what you're telling people that it stands with not just weight, but meaning. Yes, bro. Yes. But like I said, whenever, bro, I, like I said, I'm, I got a little vacation from shooting. So if you want to do it again, bro, just let me know what day and I'll be back on here. I'm at the crib, so I got time. Bet, bro. Uh, I'm going to close out like this. If you notice, my show is different. It's unique. They got stuff, so I was like, I got to have some stuff that separates myself and fill in the void. And I'm like, how do I keep that same energy and close out? The viewers knows it's coming. I'm going to hit you with it. You got any questions for me? Do I have any questions for you? Not right now, no. Fair enough, fair enough. On that note, it's Contrast Uncut. It's season four, episode 36. Want to make sure I give a big shout out to Uncle Snoop's Army and Bobby D Presents. I appreciate you, brothers. I wouldn't be able to do incredibly dope shit like interview Barry Brewer and, you know, talk about some of this history. And I mean, you know, we actually spent a little bit more time on them diamonds and jewels and gems that he let come out from his mouth. He was letting them diamonds and carrots come out by the 30 round. You understand? <laughs> so thank you, brother. Blessings on blessings. And until Let's the next blessings, show, bro. Peace. Hip hop really taught me to give it all I got left. Wu Tang taught us how to beat the projects and tell my story over beats and it could be a project. Look how it all begun. Uh, bum, skibbity bum. Yeah, grew up on that Nas, on that L, on that pun. Oh, so when I was young, crisscross, make them jump. Battle rapper for respect, my nigga. This ain't what you want. Can I kick it when I'm rhyming? Be a legend through Ebonics. Was a sticker boy. He felt like sticky. Man, I know you guys can't smell this right now, and I ain't talking about none of that other stuff. I'm talking about some of that good stuff, that smell good stuff. I think it's breakfast. What time is it? It's breakfast time. Make sure you tune in to Contrast Uncut no matter what you're doing. Whether you're eating breakfast, you're smelling good food like I'm smelling, or if you're smelling other stuff, we're good to watch too. Make sure you tune in. Thank you.